Hi, good morning. Happy Monday. Um, and welcome to our parenting um, periscope for the week. My name is Virginia. I am the author, speaker, and entrepreneur over at virginiagegeorge.com. Pop over there and say hi. Um, and today we are going to talk about figuring out what your kids um, really need. Um, hi, welcome. So we're going to talk about figuring out what our kids really need. Um, how many times as adults do we react in a way that is not, we respond to some kind of a situation in a way that um, is maybe not ideal and it's not because we don't know how to, um, how to deal with it, it's because oftentimes there's another need that needs to be met. So oftentimes, you know, I will lash out at my husband about something, I don't know, seemingly lame, but it's because inside what I really need is connection. What I'm really trying to do is to connect with him and to feel close. And so the way to do that sometimes is to um, overreact about something else or um, <clears throat> I'm getting really short and, you know, I'm very terse. And in reality, I just need to eat. Um, and that actually really happened over the weekend. I was having a really, really, like, I was really kind of down in the dumps, really having a hard time. And we went grocery shopping, and on the way home, my daughter had wanted to pick up some pita chips. And so I had just a hand, small handful of pita chips in the car on the way home, and all of a sudden I was like, oh, I feel okay now. And so really my mood, my um, down in the dumps feeling um, was really just, probably low blood sugar. I don't know. I hadn't really eaten that day yet. And so, um, you know, that, that was what the problem was. It wasn't whatever it was I was brooding over. So, um, so how do we find those things out with our kids? It's one thing when we're adults and we can look inside and, um, you know, stop for a moment and say, okay, wait a second, what's really going on here? We can't really do that with our kids. I mean, we can, but they don't necessarily know. So how do we process them walk them through that um, is what we're going to talk about today. So um, there is a, there are some great books to help, which I should have grabbed. But um, I'm doing a book study with some local moms, and we're reading How to Talk So Kids Will Listen and Listen So Kids Will Talk. And then this sister book, um, Liberated Parents, Liberated Children. Um, it's written by the same people, and it. Um, it really talks about, um, you know, having our children learn to problem solve um, and how to respond to them in ways that are not demeaning. A lot of the ways that we respond to our kids would feel extremely um, negative to us as adults. So if our goal is for them to grow up and to be adults, um, then we need to teach them the skills that they're going to need in order to make that transition, if that makes sense. So um, I've talked about it before that we, we can't expect our children to grow up and be respectful adults if we don't respect them now um, and teach them respect, um, which also includes respecting them. So, um, okay, so the first thing, um, and, I, and I have put this into practice, um, not as much as I should, um, because it, it takes self-control, um, it takes a little bit of rewiring and reworking what you're used to in your brain. Um, you know, when a kid comes and has an outburst, to give them the opportunity to, um, to figure that out or to listen to what they're saying rather than discipline the reaction. So, um, I have an example of where my 10-year-old was really upset about something, somebody said something to him, one of the kids, they were getting ready for bed, I've got four kids, um, they were getting ready for bed, and somebody said something that just set him off, I mean, for real, and he came roaring upstairs about something, um, made a threat that was very out of his character, uh, and in that moment, I stopped and thought, wait a second, there's something else going on, because there's no way he would say that unless there was something else um, going on, hold on. So we talked about, you know, I sat down with him 
um, and just was like, hey, what's going on? You know, how you feeling? What's, what's up? And, um, so that's the first step is to stop and listen. And if you want to ask questions, um, you know, what's going on? And prod them along with, you know, this really ha this happened today and I'm really angry. Oh? Um, give them the opportunity to, to work through it. Um, when you come to your friend or your spouse and you're like, oh, I'm really frustrated about this. You don't want them to just say, oh, well, you should do this and this. Or, you know, you kind of overreacted there. That was not really an appropriate response. So, um... So don't do that again. I do it this way because, you know, I know better than you do about how you should react. Um, that wouldn't go over well with you. <laughs> and it would certainly not feel supportive. And it wouldn't feel like you had somebody on your side. And, um, you know, you figure, hey, I can, I can work this out. I can do it. Well, our kids can too. So the first thing we need to do is stop and listen. And to give them the opportunity to work through it um, on their own. And then the second thing that we need to do is just to provide support. Um, like I said, a lot of times kids can come to a conclusion of what they should have done um, on their own or what's really bothering them. Um, my son told me when I asked him what was up, he said, I'm angry. I'm just really angry. I don't know why, but I'm just mad. Um, and so I sat with him and I gave him the support he needed and it turned out that somebody else had said something to him um, a day or two before that was really hurtful. Um, and he was still, it was still bothering him. He was still thinking about it and it was still questioning who he knows, knows himself to be, um, questioning his value. And so really the problem was that the problem was that he was in a situation where he didn't feel valued by somebody that was important to him and was trying to process through that feeling rather so if I would have said, hey, you can't talk like that, that was an inappropriate response, we never would have gotten to the fact that he was really hurting underneath. Um, you know, it's just, we, we talk a lot in about that with our health, right? Like, you know, don't just take Tylenol every time you have a problem because you're just masking this, you know, you're just masking the symptoms. You're not ever finding the problem or, you know, you have indigestion a lot. Well, it could be that you have some issues in your gut or it could just take Tums and, um, and antacids and, um, you know, and then you'll be fine. You can still live and function completely fine as long as you're popping Tums all day. Well, that's not the problem. The problem is underlying. The problem is in the health of the gut. And it's the same thing with our, um, our emotions. The problem is in the health of our emotions, um, of our heart, of our belief systems. And when we can dig into those and fix those things, then the outbursts and the tantrums and those kinds of things um, will lessen, um, just like those stomach aches will lessen as you heal your gut. Same kind of a situation. So, um, so we're gonna stop and listen, and we're gonna um, give them the opportunity to work things out, and then we're gonna validate their and we're gonna validate their feelings. So when he was really angry, um, I didn't try and fix his anger. I just sat there with empathy and tried to understand his anger. Um, and again, as adults, that's what we want. We want people to understand us. So um, those are um, those are the, the, the suggestions I want to make today, just about how we can dig down and figure out what's really bothering our kids so we can address that rather than just addressing um, the behaviors. So like I said, our goal is to grow these little people up and to be great, awesome, big people. Um, and in order to do that, we have to, you know, have a little self-control. And that's, that's what seriously one of the hardest things for me is to just stop my mouth and to be empathetic and stop and listen. I was parented pretty strictly. Um, there wasn't a lot of, um, or any, I guess there really wasn't any, um, discourse. There wasn't conversation, um, about how things could have gone differently or, looking into how I was feeling or why I was reacting the way I was. There just, there wasn't that. And so my instinct is to parent the same way. It's to snap to a judgment saying, I'm the parent. I understand what you're feeling or I understand what's going on here. And so this is not okay and we're going to fix it. Um, that's my default. And I don't think that that is 
um, necessarily the best. It's not the the way that I want my kids to grow up. So um, it's very challenging for me, uh, but I encourage you this week to just take one situation where you're frustrated with your kids, excuse me, and rather than jumping to some kind of a conclusion, to stop and get their side of it, to support them, to validate their feelings, um, and give them the opportunity to work through their problem on their own. And you might be surprised with a couple of leading questions, a couple of, you know, well, what could, what could we do? Um, just some really open-ended questions, let them get their answers out there. You might be surprised at how much um, they can learn about themselves through the situation. So if you have any questions, um, shoot me an email, virginia at virginiagegeorge.com or tweet me at virgeorge, and I would love to hear from you. Um, and I tomorrow is Tuesday, and tomorrow we will have office hour from 2 to 3 p.m. Central where you can catch me on Google Hangouts, have a live chat, um, hang out with me, um, ask me any questions that you have, or respond to anything that I have said on a scope or written in a blog post. Um, so I guess we will see you tomorrow. Have a great day.